Thank you for joining me today, everyone. My name is Sierra Dom. This is how most people see the world. And this is how I and an estimated 2 to 3% of Earth's population see the world. For the first time ever on the TED stage, I'd like to introduce you to a medical condition you or a loved one might already have, or could have in the future, but you just don't know the name. Visual Snow Syndrome. One day in 2015, my life changed forever. And since then, whether my eyes are open or closed, I see flashing lights and dots 24-7. I also experience debilitating pain, photophobia, palinopsia, tinnitus, and derealization. And my story mirrors that of thousands of people of all ages and backgrounds. They're forced to give up driving, working, and going to school. They're sensitive to visual and auditory stimuli, so things like being in a grocery store, watching your favorite shows or movies, and even sitting in front of a computer screen can all be extremely uncomfortable. Our lives were uprooted and now we can't even see the sky or the faces of those we love as we once knew them. If this suddenly happened to you or someone you care about, what would you do? Well, until recently, the majority of the medical community didn't know or want to acknowledge that visual snow exists. Countless patients were left misdiagnosed and marginalized, myself included. So, in 2018, I started a global initiative to prove that one of the world's most unknown medical conditions actually exists. And I didn't stop until it was acknowledged by the international medical community. In any profession, when someone has the designated credentials, it invites us to believe they must know what they're saying or doing. But when the people we rely on for answers don't know, or they give us the wrong answers, what are you supposed to do? Don't be intimidated. If there's no resources available to help you, create them. And just because a problem falls outside your area of expertise, this does not preclude you from making a difference. Persist through adversity and take action. That way, it won't take being confronted with a life or death scenario like I was to realize how capable of helping yourself and others you actually are. In 2015, I was a university student studying communication and film. The host of my own radio show and a writer, I was brimming with hope and zeal until one day, as I was driving to school, my vision went black. Thankfully, my instincts kicked in and I was able to avoid an accident, but when my vision returned moments later, the world didn't look the same. It was like a veil was covering my eyes. More frightening symptoms appeared in the following days. I spent what everyone told me would be the best years of my life in hospitals and doctors braced me for the worst. They said I was either going blind or dying. Neither an ideal outcome for obvious reasons. I did every test you can think of, blood tests, x-rays, PET scans, MRIs, you name it, I did it, and all my results came back normal. My doctors didn't know what to do. Some were compassionate, but with normal results, many just didn't believe me after that. In fact, one doctor even referred me to a psychiatrist. So they sent me home, feeling like a medical outlier, a complete oddity. I know that looking up your symptoms online can be a slippery slope, but in this moment, I felt compelled to do my own research. So with lowered screen brightness, increased font size, and tinted glasses, I typed into a search engine. Snowy vision, static in eyes, 
I came across a research article published in a well-known medical journal. The author, Dr. Peter Goadsby, winner of the 2021 Brain Prize in Neuroscience, was describing a condition called visual snow syndrome. I got chills. After 18 harrowing months, here was a doctor describing and acknowledging the legitimacy of my symptoms with eloquent precision. It would ultimately be Dr. Goadsby who diagnosed me with visual snow. I learned that visual snow syndrome is a neuro-ophthalmological disorder, which is a fancy way of saying brain eye disorder. Structurally, your eyes are fine. It's your brain that behaves abnormally. This causes a host of symptoms throughout the body, including impaired vision. Some people get it out of nowhere like I did. Others are born with it. So I candidly asked Dr. Goadsby, how is it I went to all the top medical institutions in the country and yet no one mentioned visual snow? Dr. Goadsby told me there are still many non-believers in the medical community. Substantiating the condition's existence would require funding for research, and until that happened, he and his colleagues could not foresee proper help for patients, a treatment, or a cure in my lifetime. Some say the medical community failed me. But actually, they inspired me. Their shortcomings and dismissal only fueled my passion to right their wrongs. Sure, I lack the qualifications, right? But if not me, then who? So, in 2018, I developed a strategy to bring validation and resources to those with visual snow and legitimacy to the syndrome itself. I assembled a team of compassionate and talented individuals, and we contacted all the doctors and scientists we could find around the world who were studying this condition. And together, we organized the first visual snow conference in history. Held at UCSF, the event brought together patients and their families with top experts in visual snow. We presented the latest body of research, and patients were able to ask questions to professionals who understood them for the first time in their life. After that, I started a nonprofit called the Visual Snow Initiative, or VSI, dedicated to awareness, education, and research for visual snow. VSI would raise the capital to fund research efforts and treatment development in seven different countries. Now, I had no background in fundraising, by the way, especially for a neuro-ophthalmological condition. That's pretty niche. But I knew no one could care about visual snow if they don't even know it exists. So we focused on getting the word out there and creating content. Medical jargon? It's unnecessarily convoluted. The concepts themselves are actually understandable, but the way things are worded, it confuses patients about their own health instead of empowering them. So, I translated info about visual snow into a friendlier, more palatable format. That way, it would be easier to understand regardless of age or health literacy. We also created 300 videos about visual snow. And by now, I had begun networking with public figures to garner support for our cause. We even got a little help from our friends, like Ringo Starr, and VSI sponsored the Daytime Emmys. At this point, our efforts were beginning to generate buzz, and before I knew it, I was being asked to do interviews. All of this translated into donations, and research that was once non-existent had taken off. By now, I was getting emails and messages every day from people with visual snow all around the world. They had been told it was all in their head, and many were suicidal due to the lack of acknowledgement and their suffering. Hearing from people in over 83 countries, it became clear this condition may not be as rare as we initially thought. For some, symptoms are mild, but for others, they are devastating. So, with the help of our experts, VSI created the first ever diagnostic criteria for visual snow. By showing this criteria to a doctor, patients anywhere in the world can find out if they have visual snow. 
We also created the first worldwide directory of doctors and specialists. That way, you can find a qualified physician with knowledge of visual snow in your area. Our team also collaborated with Professor Ed Boyden, a neuroscientist at MIT who utilizes technology to invent medical solutions for the brain. And most recently, we brought together two doctors whose visual snow treatment protocol has reduced symptoms for 80% of patients and returned them to their previous quality of life. The VSI-funded sang shudlovsky study may soon become the first and only viable treatment for visual snow. The same treatment we thought wouldn't be available in our lifetime. And the condition doctors told me didn't exist five years ago, through our efforts, has been solidified and proven real. In this world, we can either make things happen watch things happen, or wonder what happened. Great ideas often remain dormant, and talented people never reach their full potential because they underestimate themselves or overestimate others. But don't be intimidated by lofty titles or lengthy CVs. They can provide a false sense of perceived knowledge that may or may not be deserved. People trained in their field of choice tend to look at problem solving the same way, so coming from a different area like I did, you'll probably encounter several ways that do not work, which can actually be a good thing. You just know to eliminate those. But with persistence, you can find innovative solutions. Categorization is not meant to empower. It is meant to simplify things and separate people. Think. Doctor, patient, boss, employee. But humans are complex and dynamic, capable of evolving and developing new skills. Your potential is vast. You don't have to choose between being a jack of all trades or a master of just one. You can become a master of multiple things and help people along the way. So don't box yourself into a category, and don't let others do it to you. Your circumstances are not fixed, and you are never powerless. So have the courage to ask questions, and question the answers you're given, however all-knowing a source may seem. Because regardless of qualifications, when it comes to anything in life, you are your best advocate. Had I not gotten visual snow syndrome, I never would have realized the upside of taking action. And just as I did, you too can turn negative circumstances into positive outcomes. Thank you.